I mean, the show was mega. It went from us doing small appearances to us closing down Soho when Dash opened. I have made all of these huge brands very famous through really clever endorsements. I want to start doing this for brands that I have an equity piece in. Simon, I want to get your story. Free Hollywood. I want you to go back to where you grew up, how you grew up, if you knew that you were meant for New York, for Hollywood. What was your childhood like? Oh, my God. Such a heated question. So I guess this all starts back. I grew up in Ottawa, Canada, and I never really knew what I wanted to do. I knew that I was obsessed with celebrities. So at the age of 10, my parents got me a subscription to like People magazine. And like every Christmas, all of my stocking stuffers were tabloids. Like I had an Us Weekly subscription throughout high school and I would like tear things out. I would put them on boards. And I knew that I was obsessed with the idea and kind of like the mechanics of celebrity. Like I was fascinated by agents and managers. I was like, how does that even work? Like, what do they do? So during award seasons, I would sit there with my parents. We would watch the show and I would see the red carpet and I'd be like, who's that person moving them around with a clipboard? Like, I want to know about the clipboard life. And then in college, you know, I was kind of just trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I still had an Us Weekly subscription. Like I received a weekly Us Weekly in my dorm at college, which is like strange. And my school was like very academic. And there I am like reading about at the time it was like Lindsay Lohan. And there was an article about a woman named Lizzie Grubman. And Lizzie, if you aren't familiar with Lizzie, Lizzie had a show on MTV called Power Girls. And she was also involved in a very high profile car accident, unfortunately, that um, she hit 20 people outside of a car and she outside of a nightclub and she ended up going to, to prison and she came out of prison and MTV gave her a TV show. And that's where I found her. P people died in that accident or no? They were no, Just, they were maimed and wounded. Oh. Um, and it was awful. And but it kind of she became from this incident like Welcome to America this thing in New York City. I mean, she'd always had this PR firm, but this accident really propelled her into the spotlight. And that is where this Us Weekly story about her came out. She was like spotted holding hands. They called her publicity princess, Lizzie Grubman, spotted holding hands with John Mayer at NYC Hotspot Marquee. And I was like, oh my God, like these are all triggers for me. Like what is a publicity princess and how do I get involved? So I picked up the telephone and I called her office and I said, I will do anything. I will work for free, whatever you want. And they kept hanging up on me. And they're like, we don't have a job. We don't have a job. We don't do interns. Finally, someone picked up and said, okay, I will meet you if you happen to be in New York. So I called my parents and I was like, I, I got a job interview. They were like, amazing. What is it? What's the firm? Like, they thought I was like looking for like, you know, a marketing agency. I was looking for anything outside of kind of what I was doing then. And, um, a month later I met with Lizzie and Jonathan in New York and the rest is history. I started as an unpaid intern and that was 18 years ago. Were your parents always supportive when you were growing up? Because I know that a lot of people ask me, cause I've always, I feel like I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur and a lot of people's parents are like, no, you have to be this or you have to be a doctor or a lawyer. Were your parents always like you do you? Hmm. Yes. But I think they also thought the dreams of like working because I didn't know what I didn't even know what PR was. I thought PR was like event planning. I thought like I would be like lighting candlesticks on a table. Like I didn't know <laughs> I'm from Canada. So we didn't even know. I didn't know that. Like, I mean, I still to this day, like when I think of PR, it's like a vast industry. Saying you're a publicist doesn't properly like surmise what each publicist does. Like there's different types of, there's corporate PR, there's healthcare PR, there's like entertainment PR. So I didn't really know what I was getting into, but I knew that anything attached to celebrity, I would be really good at because I was very passionate and I was obsessed. I wanted to learn everything about every TV show, every character. Like I was just, I was in it. What are some of your first celebrity moments where you were like, oh my God, I've come so far. This is so crazy. Like looking way, way, way back. So... When I first got the job, first of all, it was an unpaid internship. 
So it wasn't like this dream job and I didn't come for money. So I was living on like a sofa situation on a friend's, you know, it was not a glam. Speak about this because I think people need to hear this because it's like you loved it so much. You're getting an unpaid internship. Yeah. So I, I basically met with Lizzie and Lizzie was partners with this guy named Jonathan Chebin, who now goes by Food God. Officially? Is that and a legal name change? He legally changed his name to Food God, which is wild. Yeah. Michael wants to change his name to Hair God. No, you also have the, the thickest mane. Well, that I do have. That is I natural. Do. Stimulate his scalp daily. You're no, whatever you're doing. Are you on like supple? Are you on supplements? Yeah, are you on, on Lemmy? Lemmy? Listen, I'm on, sh- <laughs> I'm on a shit. Yes, it's all Lemmy. Yeah. If you want hair like this, let me do a plug for you. I'm going to hear Yeah. Oh, this is the blunt one. Yeah. If you guys want hair like this, Lemmy, that's your answer. No, you have great. I've done two transplant surgeries. <gasps> really? Yeah. You yeah. know, um, I'm a quarter two. Japanese. You wouldn't know that looking at me. And I think I have that kind of like the Asian hair. Got okay, the look, enough right? bragging. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm so here for you. This is your that, glow up today. We're, yeah. we're, you're done with it. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait to hear about your hair transplants. But so, I mean, if I would have first... known that I was going to get this many compliments, we would have had you on a lot sooner. I know. Please. Yeah. Oh, my God. Believe, Lauren, He's gonna I'm going to be like, guest Simon said I had great hair. <laughs> Cancel the rest and of the teeth. guests this week. And, and teeth. teeth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Your teeth are a 10. Well, the teeth are not as real. And like I said, yeah. I knocked them all out when I was a kid. But yeah, yeah. phenomenal dentist. Okay, so you're an unpaid intern. You're on the couch. So I'm on I'm on the sofa, and it was really Jonathan. Like when I went in for my interview, it was Jonathan that took an interest in me. He was like, "Who is this?" Like I was so enthusiastic. I was talking with my hands. I was, I just couldn't believe I was in New York City. I'd never been in New York. I've been in New York once before. I was just enthralled by everything. There were camera crews in the office. So Jonathan was the one that really kind of took me under his wing. When he just saw the talent or he saw the potential or what do you I think? think he saw the enthusiasm. Okay. Which is really, I mean, people are always like, what are the hacks to like making it? I'm like, just be really enthusiastic and passionate about what you do. And that's really all you need. Like I didn't really know what my my next day would look like. I didn't really have the money to live in New York for longer than a month. Yet I wasn't getting paid, but I still it's almost like I think of me at 39 now. And I'm so nervous about every decision I make and I overthink and I stay up at night. And I'm like, where was that? The 20 year old Simon was like, move to New York, have no career path, spend all this money on an education, go into go into something completely different. Like you kind of lose it. But at the time, I I just was I didn't even think about it. And at this point, are you single, ready to mingle or are you dating? What's your love life? like? I OK, so love life is is essentially non-existent. I went to a school where I was literally like the only openly gay person. I mean, maybe there were two or three other people, but it was a very, I wouldn't say conservative school. It was just, it just wasn't really the time where there was tons of openly gay people on campus. Looking back though, now when you look back and you like maybe talk to people online, is that, is that actually because people were suppressing their sexuality? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's not yeah. like you were the only gay person. just people were not open yeah, with it. They were not open. So that was probably liberating, though, to be like one of the only people in a time when people were suppressing that. Yeah, it was. It was. And then coming to New York, I felt like the first couple of years in New York, I had no time for anything other than career. I was just dead. And I also being from Ottawa and not being around this, I was so deeply intimidated. I would kind of walk into these rooms and I'd be with Jonathan and I could feel that people and you guys may relate to this just like in seeing as your careers have grown, like people in certain circles only want to talk to you if they feel like there's something to benefit. And so at the time when I was this unpaid intern, you know, there are people now who are sending me glowing emails who want to have dinner and who 18 years ago, like would say nice to meet you, but not look at me in the face, like where you'd feel a little bit invisible. And I, I experienced that for the first five, six, seven years of living in New York when I didn't when I didn't have this like Rolodex of people in my life and I was just the intern. You know, it's funny not to bring up the Jenner, but Caitlyn Jenner came on the show and was talking about how when he, she, he at the time, Bruce was coming up, had met Bob Iger. But Bob Iger was a bag handler at a hotel and before he became Bob Iger of Disney. And he was like, you never know yeah. who's later going to have. You never know this rise to, you know, yeah. whatever they're going to rise to. It's just like, you never know. You never know. And like, so, so when we were talking about Melissa Wood before we started, Melissa and I met, Melissa was a cocktail waitress at Marquee when I met her in 2007. And I was the intern with the clipboard, uh-huh. you know, like 
that's why like these relationships that you have and and you like people that you just love you're so proud of them when they when they pop and they follow their dreams because look what they look what they get to do when you look back who are the celebrity epiphanies that you look back and you're like this was such a moment for me well, I think the moments, like the moment that's like obviously the most glaring would be meeting the girls, like meeting, I met Kim in 2007 through uh, our, our friend Brittany Gastineau at the time. And Kim wasn't on a TV show. And I remember her having a conversation about Ryan Seacrest and him kind of offering to do a show on E! And I remember my opinion was like, oh, maybe reality is like not really the look. I remember thinking like, oh God, reality. Anna and Nicole Smith had done a show and it just felt like, that wasn't the vibe. I mean, thank God no one listened to me. <laughs> <laughs> and and Kim had a very, just even at, at her age then, she just knew instinctively like what, like just to follow her gut and to do. And so, and same with, same with Chloe. I mean, at the time, Chloe was Nicole Richie's personal assistant and I was Jonathan's personal assistant. Um, we were all so young and we, and the world, and Instagram wasn't around then. So it was just a different world. At this point, Brittany had her own TV show. Yes. Remember that TV yes. show? Oh my God, I was I was on it. Yeah. You were on it. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God, I didn't know that. I yeah. didn't know I mean, that like, fact. I, I, like in the background as a cameo, but Brittany and Lisa, we, I was very close with Brittany and Lisa, and they had a very successful TV show, and they had two seasons, and Brittany was the beginning of it. I like she's the OG, and she's also how I met the girls. So at what? point point do you decide that you want to do spin crowd so this was something i think for jonathan and if he was here he would he would be nodding his head in agreement like he always wanted to turn up the fame he was like i like we had a marketing company where we connected brands with celebrities and did pr but he always felt more comfortable being the star himself i did not i was like let's grow this business like let's get the loot let's I mean, this was at the time when like connecting brands with celebrities was still kind of a novel. I mean, there was traditional endorsements, but not in the way we think about influence now, where people are just talking about products, holding products, speaking about what works for them. Like th that's a whole, that's a recent kind of a 10 year phenomenon. But back then it was traditional endorsements, like celebrity holding products, smiling. And so that was changing. Jonathan wanted to, wanted to do a show. We felt like a lot of people were really fascinated with what we did at our company, connecting brands with celebrities. And so Kim came on and said, I'm fascinated. Like, let's do a show about this. So Kim was the executive producer of the show and co-creator of the show. She was already on E! And the show, her show was crushing it. It kind of like... You first, guys had all these like crossovers. Because yeah. I remember seeing both on, on both, on both yeah. shows. She was our lead in. So we had, and this is at the time. Good lead in. Like talk about a lead in. <laughs> and this is the, like our season was the season when Courtney literally pulled, I think it was Mason out of her. Like, do you remember that like iconic TV moment where she like literally just like pulled Mason out of her, like, and they filmed it. I mean, the show was mega, 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 mega. And our, so spin crowd was the show that was following it and showed kind of our office life in LA with Jonathan and I, and we did, it was eight episodes. And truthfully, like, I liked the experience. I'm glad we did it, but I, I wouldn't do it again. You wouldn't go on television again? Not in no that way. format, no. Why? I think when you film a show like that, it's you set yourself up to create scenarios that aren't always 100% authentic. Because a lot of the things that I do, I can't show on TV. Yeah, I think about like... I guess maybe what you're saying is like you have to kind of fabricate some things to make it more interesting. Because if you're just running the business... One, you can't show some of that stuff. And two, yeah, you know, you're, if you're running a business that's maybe dysfunctional, like that wouldn't be a sustainable business. So you're, you're kind of like creating this scenario that. Yeah. Or you take on. It wasn't that the storylines were fake. They were all real. It, they were they were just with clients we would normally never work with. Yeah. Or doing things that we normally wouldn't do. And one thing I would say is like Jonathan's superpower, not my I can't turn it up. Like, I'm only good at just kind of being me. You seem very business minded, though. Like, you're happier being behind the scenes. 100%. I'm like a sensitive Sally. Like, I was like in my DMs reading some comments and I'm like, oh, trigger. Like, I, I, I rather just not do that at all. Um, you have to have thick skin. You have to have really thick skin. What's a crisis that has happened in, it could be like in 2007, whenever, whenever, 
that you helped put the fire out that's sort of public knowledge? All right. We streamline every single thing in our life, including dog food. And the dry dog food that I like is by Sundays. Okay. First of all, this is 90% meat, 10% vegetables, and zero fake nutrients. Okay. So you're going to get like USDA beef, all natural chicken, and it really helps with their digestion. So I will definitely use this when I can tell that they need to get things moving. You know what I mean? It has like digestion aids in it, like pumpkin and ginger, and then a lot of disease fighting antioxidants. I am all about making things easy. And I like how this is just delivered to your door. It's zero prep, zero mess, zero stress, and it's shelf stable. So you can just feed your pup, your dog, the best top quality food. I don't want to go run out and get dog food and to have this come to my door is actually amazing. You should also know, most importantly, it's affordable. So this costs 40% less than other healthy dog foods because Sundays doesn't waste money on shipping frozen packages. So instead, they just source the best all natural ingredients for your dog. So if you're looking for a healthier dry dog food, this is easy to store, it's easy to serve, and most importantly, it comes to your door. We worked out a special deal for all our dog-loving listeners. Get 35% off your first order of Sundays. You're going to go to sundaysfordogs.com slash skinny or use code skinny at checkout. That's S-U-N-D-A-Y-S-F-O-R-D-O-G-S dot com forward slash skinny. Upgrade your pup to Sundays and feel good about the food you feed your dog. Things get bloated for me, let me tell you. And I am a fucking practitioner when it comes to bloat. I mean, I'm doing the ice bath, the cold plunge, I sauna, I ice roll, and I take my array bloat capsules. These, you guys, are five herbs plus one fruit-based digestive enzyme. I've been told by so many doctors for so long that after you eat, just having that digestive enzyme really helps target bloat so you feel relief. And once I implemented Array into my routine, I noticed a huge difference, especially in my stomach bloating. So I actually did a deep dive on the brand to see exactly what's in it. And you should know they have ginger root, and this is going to stimulate the digestion. They have lemon balm for gas prevention. They have dandelion root for liver health. They have peppermint also for gas prevention. And they have slippery elm. This makes things move. And lastly, and my favorite ingredient is they have bromelain. So this is actually found in pineapple. I learned about this from the doctor who did my boobs. And he was like, you need this after surgery. And this is going to help so much with bloat and swelling, but also speeds up your food breakdown. So if you're looking for something that's 100% natural to help with bloating, this is great after a big meal. I love it after like pizza or pasta, but I especially like it when I travel and I go on a flight. It's vegan, non-GMO, gluten-free, filler-free, cruelty-free, and non-habit forming. You're going to go to Oray.com and use code SKINNY at checkout. You get 15% off your first purchase plus a free sleep mini, which is another amazing product that they have. That's Array.com, code SKINNY. Thrive Market, making everyone's life easier. No one wants to get in the car and go to the grocery store. They want convenience. They want efficiency. So for my grocery and household essentials, I go to Thrive Market. I have been using Thrive Market for literally four years, you guys. I'm telling you, if you want to save money on every single order, like 30% each time, and you want everything delivered straight to your door, then you got to try them out. The best part, though, is like they do the annoying lifting for you. So they're going to go on and they're going to categorize everything. So they have like non-toxic cleaning essentials, gluten-free snacks that are certified. They have vegan, vegetarian, like everything is organized and everything is vetted. So you know when you're placing an order that it's actually a legit brand. They've really done the dirty work for you. I love to go on there and just pick out everything. It comes straight to my door. I get the deals. I open the door. I grab my groceries and I am good to go. It's great if you're busy, if you're a working mom, if you're a working dad, this is for you. You're going to join Thrive Market today and get 30% off your first order Plus, you guys get a free $60 gift. Go to thrivemarket.com slash skinny for 30% off your first order, plus a free $60 gift. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash skinny. Thrivemarket.com slash skinny. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash skinny. Thrivemarket.com slash skinny. I mean, I think there's so many. <laughs> there's so many. Um, there was a, cr- I guess the crisis 
there was a crisis when, so Jonathan and Lizzie had this partnership, this company together. And two years into the partnership, she wanted to end the partnership. And I could have stayed with Lizzie or went with Jonathan. And I made the decision to go with Jonathan. I felt like um, instinctively there was just this connection I had with him. And he was he was somewhat my mentor, um, even though now he's like people who know him back then. He was really kind of this PR king in New York City. He's now known for food and whatever else he's doing. But at the time, he really was like the guy in New York. Like he had built a very, very formidable career in PR. Absolutely. What Absolutely. about what about a crisis that you guys have to put out as a PR agency? Like, I, and, and you don't need to give specific names. I'm just wondering, what does your behind the scenes look like? Oh my god, it's so many group chats. Um, like, is someone like getting arrested for like drinking too much? Yeah. Like, what are the what are the yeah. things that are thrown at you? I'm curious as from behind the scenes yeah. of it. So. I'll give you a little context. So our company specifically connects brands with celebrities. So although I'm a publicist by trade, like that's how I started my career, we don't do that anymore. People often think like I represent the Kardashians or I represent talent. I actually don't represent anyone. But what I do is that if there is like a brand issue and a PR issue with a celebrity, like I'm there to fix it. So give us, it could be like- And is that just relationship? Give us a random example. Uh, the rela- so the relationship is on the brand side. So brands hire me. Talent doesn't hire me. Okay. Like, I don't know how talent publicists do it. I would, ju- I would. Like, is Corona hiring you when coronavirus happened? So like, <laughs> like. <laughs> I need more of like, so I, like, I, like some, I get confused with PR public. Like, yeah, I get confused. Yeah. So for example, Pepsi would hire us and say, we're looking to launch a Super Bowl campaign with, I don't know, Beyonce. This didn't happen, but I'm just telling you, this is an example. So I would then say, okay, Beyonce is great. This is what it's going to look like. This is what it's going to cost. This is how I'd structure the deal. Here are three other great options. And then I would negotiate that deal and bring that deal to life. Isn't that, to me, that sounds like a manager. Is No. But I'm on the, I'm on the brand side. So the manager's receiving the deal. So I'm do- our agency command is talking to managers and agents all day long. Got it. So you're really so like I would talk to you if I wanted to do like if you wanted to if we wanted to work with a brand, but Dear Media would talk to you. Yeah, not the exactly. other way, not the other way around. Or like I, you probably don't even know this, but I'm sh- I know that my company Command has brought you yourself personally deals, endorsement deals that your agent has then passed on or accepted. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, happens all the time. Oh my god! So you guys are kind of like silent, but they're on the brand side. We're on the brand side. So I guess the best way to say it is we're essentially talent brokers. Got it. Okay. But is that, this is my last question about yeah. it because I do get confused. Yeah. Is that a publicist too, or is that different than a publicist? It's it's completely different than a publicist, but I started my career in PR. So there's a lot of, even my parents are like, I don't know what he does. He represents people. I'm like, I, I told you I don't represent people, but fine. So yeah. why did you decide to leave being a publicist? I was more interested. I thought that it was more lucrative. The, the, the brokering side of it. And I was already doing it. Like I was doing it in the PR sense, but I just wasn't getting compensated well, for honest, it. Talent's pain in the ass. Yeah. Right. Talents. And I'm the one that comes with the money. So I'm like, I'm the one that's bringing the deals. So I don't care that you're not happy with the quote that was approved. Cause like I'm on the brand, I'm on the brand side. I'm bringing the loot. So I need everyone just to get in line. <laughs> So are you actually managing anything with the talent or do you just go to the talent's manager? Just manager. Which is why I didn't know command has brought me anything. Yeah, exactly. Got it. Exactly. Okay. I just had to clear that up because yeah. I I was talking about this last night about publicists, PR, yeah. brand managers, agencies. It is confusing. Well, it's also the wild, wild west. Back in the day, there was like, it was a, it was very gatekeeped. You know, no one really knew what was going on. Now you're like, you know, the assistant can do a deal. Right. The assistant's like, I got a paid post for 10K. Who wants to take it? You're like, oh, my God. Like, it's just it's not what it used to be. It's wild. It's wild. So let's go back to your you do your show and then you're also making appearances on the Kardashians. Yes. At this point, was the Kardashians as powerful of a show as it is now? Or was it kind of just coming up when your first appearance happens? Um, It was it was at the time when like lightning had struck. So it was, it was pan, it went from us doing small appearances wherever to us closing down Soho when Dash opened. No, because like Lauren, actual I, Dash, like, like you, you couldn't close down Soho, th- like the actual neighborhood. Like there was, 
thousands of people outside the store. Is that, I actually want to know from like a micro level, is that overwhelming with all so many people? I mean, for them, I think absolutely. I think it was like completely overwhelming. And, and at the time, I don't know, I think there was probably like a small amount of security, but not how they're moving now. You know, no one was really prepared for how quick it happened. And well, and how do you roll that back after? Yeah. I mean, you, it's like you're in it now. Yes. Yeah. You're in it. So when you decided to make an appearance on the show, are you nervous? I'm not nervous because I, it's not like you suddenly show up and your, your friend, like it's not, you're meeting them when they're not, not globally known and they're starting a show. You're kind of there through all the different stages of it versus just being thrown on a show that's already a hit. If that makes sense. Got it. And also, I think what is seems to be like so great about you is you're you seem very confident and comfortable with who you are, where you don't need to come on the show and like do a tap dance. No, I'm not good at the tap dance. No, but I think that's that's good. It's they already yeah. are the like main characters yeah. and you're like good supporting character energy. Yes. Or or just in the background or just chilling. Like, I, I think people watch the show for the girls. So everyone else just needs to be themselves. I, I, some people like, and Jonathan's great at this. Like he, he can turn up the energy. I am like, uh, I, it's not my vibe. I mean, listen, you need all different kinds of people around you. That's important. Yeah. Hello. So, so as the show starts to go on, at what point do you launch your own businesses and then go into business as a partner of Lemmy? So after, you know, 10 years of doing this, I'm like, okay, I kind of understand the secret sauce of how to make brands famous. And I understand like the Venn diagram of consumer brand, influencer, celebrity and sales. And I've made all of these huge brands very famous through really clever endorsements. I want to start doing this for brands that I have an equity piece in. So I start joining boards of companies and being an advisor. And then in 2018, my co-founder and I of Judy started, it wasn't, Judy at the time, we were thinking of 17 different brands, but we had friends and family, friends in California who had lost their home in wildfires. And this is when we met you. You met me in 2020. Yeah. Was this right before the pandemic? The pandemic had not kicked in. No, no. I remember when that happened. I was like, I thought about Judy and I was like, damn, what a smart business. Obviously not the greatest time, but like talk about an opportune moment, right? Uh, Like crazy. So we, we did our preparedness class at Reina's like Mm -hmm. in November of 2019 we launched the brand Judy in January 2020. Can I say something too? Please. That group of people was the most unpre- under, like they were the most unprepared yeah. people. They needed Judy. They needed no. a few Judys. No, we, we saved Raina, them. Raina, yeah. I love you. But, yeah. but th- these, I remember sitting in that group with these people. I'm like, Lauren, if the flood happens, if lightning yeah. strikes, this group. I'm like, one of these people though, that's just like, you got it handled, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was all these, there was all these phenomenal people. Yeah. Tell all me these, where to stand. Yeah. But no, I remember looking, do we have Wi-Fi? No, do we have Wi-Fi? I remember looking around, I'm like, Lauren, if shit goes down, I don't think these people are going to save us. 100%. Right? 100%. I was like, no, they need we were... Judy and they need a bunch of other people to come in and help them with the Judy. Well, that, that, that was the thing with Judy. Like when we started researching preparedness, 60% of American families are not prepared for an emergency. And I I was like, that's me. Yeah. I, I don't even know. what 60% I'm... of them were at that house, I think. No, they, they, they were all so clueless to all of it. But and I think that was like what why Judy was so appealing was like there was this like huge white space of people not really caring about emergency preparedness. Sure. And then thinking, oh, but it's not going to happen to me. Like that kind of like emotional distance of this would never happen to me. So January 2020, we launch and then we start to get, there's like media reports in early February of coronavirus. Mm -hmm. But just like all media, you think, oh, like, is that actually? It's not going to happen to me. It's not going to happen. And then by middle of March, we have sold out of every single Judy in a matter of 48 hours. Jenna Bush, who is a friend and a supporter mentioned Judy so casually. She said with all this coronavirus stuff going on, I have my Judy that my friend Simon gave to me and I'm so excited that I'm prepared that aired and we sold out of six months worth of stock. Well, I actually do have my Judy that my friend Simon gave me at (laughs) Rena's house too. And honestly, like my thing is if something happens to Michael, I have, I at least I have Judy. Yeah. And it's, and it's chic. It's, it's chic. chic. It's, it's cute. Chic. It's definitely it's organized. And yeah. I also yeah. think if you're someone who lives alone and you don't know too much about emergency preparedness, it's a great thing to have no matter how big your house is. It doesn't yes. take up like, like, okay, 
this motherfucker when we had a storm in Austin. We were in that freeze. Remember in Texas that yes. happened? Yeah. Yes. Try goes out and Insane. buys way too much shit that we're never going to use. Listen, and yeah. I'm meanwhile, I'm, I'm like, I'm yeah, with yeah, my yeah. Judy, my yeah. being a minimalist. <laughs> <laughs> like don't want a bunch of clutter. Yeah. It's so much more the move than buying a bunch of random crap. No, Simon, you'll get that. I'm prepared now. I'm yeah. like overly prepared. Thank you. Yeah. No, you need to be. And and we launched generators then like a year after that because oh, power smart. is a big, yeah, power is a big thing for a lot of people. Smart. Yeah. That is so smart. So it's been, it's been kind of this crazy journey. And then my husband, Phil, he launched his startup and I became kind of a formal advisor for that. A year after Judy. So in 2021, he launched Sniff, which is a, I think we sent you some of the candles, but there are. Wait. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's yeah. something I did not know. Yeah. I love your candles. Oh, good. You have them. You okay, did good. the candle collab with Half Bake Harvest. Yes. It smells so good. Isn't it? In, yeah. She's amazing. And the Pumpkin. candle's amazing. That's that huge candle in our house. How many that brands I you got like... up your sleeve over there? What's going no, on? No, no, no. It's all smoke and mirrors. No, <laughs> it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. But what once, like the formula is the same for all of them, like create a great product and find really interesting people who actually like it. Create a great products for someone who's listening. Can you give like a couple more tips for creating? Because I feel like you're the brand whisper. Give so us a couple tips. For, for me, my, I would say my whisper, like where my superpower lies yeah. is, is influencer and celebrity, like how to make it famous. I think anyone right now who has a startup um, who's living online, it's, it's really hard to acquire customers. It's hard to break through the noise. There's hundreds of brands out there. So finding really like the half-baked harvesting, totally organic. That was half-baked discovering the product, I think through Melissa Wood and loving it. And then reaching out to Phil, my husband, and saying, we should do something together. I love your candles. Like, and, and that happened because Melissa was a really like, and none of this was paid. This was all just set, making sure your product gets in the hands of the right people. Because if it's a good product, people want to do things with you. And you know, you do so many amazing collabs. I love your product. It's I didn't realize that Sniff was also you and your husband's. It's an amazing candle. Thank you. Can I ask this question? Please. What what are the um points that you guys hit when you're making a candle? For instance, can I light it around my kids? Can I light it around the dog? I want to know more about that. Yeah, fire safety is a big thing because the four wick candles which you guys have they they can be you have to blow those out and there's candle maintenance. So you have to trim the wicks every time like they should never get longer than you know it should be this and you shouldn't light them for more than five hours and most people do so you like you have a dinner party and you light it and four candle four wicks burning is that's a fire hazard because that heats up the glass and that's not just for sniff that's for diptyque that's for every candle brand ever like you should never keep a candle like that lit for more than five hours i did not know that yeah it's a, it's You're going to burn our house down, Lord. It's a thing. No, we tell we tell everyone. I'm like, I tell, I told Phil actually yesterday. I'm like, we have to lean in on that education so people know. Can you sleep with a fireplace on? The Judy side of me says absolutely not. Ooh, yeah. we just did that. Yeah. You can sleep with a fireplace on. I don't know. Kind of, okay. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Fireplace is on for a long time. Yeah. I don't the know. Judy side of, you yeah. Do yeah, the, the fire, Judy side of the him Judy saying, side of me is like, don't take, why take the risk? Yeah. You yeah. slept with a fire place on at San Isidro Ranch full time. Oh, isn't that place? Oh. No, 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 no. That's beyond crackling fire. Yeah, I should. If I didn't get married at, at the at the hotel in LA, I would have I would have done there. You yeah. got married at the hotel Bel Air. Bel Air, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was so special. I mean, no, no, no. It was I, it was a wedding. I'm sure you had a crackling fireplace. Yeah, no, we too. had many. We had many. <laughs> no, I, I I became so crazy at my wedding. I I. I was the bridezilla. Like Phil didn't even know. Phil attended. I was like, this is your, this is your itinerary. Wait, tell me about how, first of all, tell me about who proposed, how you proposed, and then the wedding and how you were bridezilla. So <laughs> I, I proposed to Phil. Phil okay. and I had met on Tinder eight years ago. And what did you like about him when you looked at his profile? So I liked the fact that he was off the gay grid. What does that mean? So no one really knew him. You know, he worked in finance. He wasn't in the mix. He didn't know. He wasn't going to the Thursday party and the set. He didn't know what what that was. And he had a lot of family photos, like him and his sisters and his, t which I love. Like I love that. No desperate energy. No, most. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say most because I don't want to get in trouble. But love a guy in a finance. <laughs> yeah, a lot of gay men, you know, have a lot of shirtless photos in their like they're not showing sweet innocent 
photos of their siblings in their Tinder profile. And Phil, Phil is just the sweetest, nicest. Like I, I married my best friend. I, I truly like I lucked out. So part of the reason he married me though was to get to Montauk. We have a beach house, a little beach house in, in Montauk and he is obsessed with Montauk. So I proposed to him um, in front of our beach house on the sand. It was actually January, 2020, two weeks before I launched Judy. I had these massive rocks assembled on the beach that said, you better say yes. And I, which is crazy. And I walked him down and he saw the rocks and he was like, someone's done an art exhibit. And I'm like, uh, read it. And he's like, I don't know what it says. And I'm like, well, keep reading it. Like it says you. And he's like, you. And I'm like, is there a, what's going on here right now? And my friends were like hiding in the bushes with a video camera. And then, so I know now why people get on like bended knee. So I got on bended knee and then. Cause yeah. that's the indication of like, yeah, yeah. it's the trigger. Yeah. And then how were you bridezilla? Cause I started off by being like the wedding, the wedding's going to be small. And then a week later, I had my first call with Mindy Weiss. I was like, the wet. And then Mindy's like, we don't need to do anything crazy. And I was like, no, no, no. We are leaning in. Like my whole vibe for wedding was I wanted like residential. I said, I want to feel like you're in like this cozy, rich living room. I don't want wedding vibes at all. I don't want any crazy flowers, over the top orchids. I wanted to feel like you're in someone's home. So I just like went crazy with the theme. Like I... We did like, I mean, we went so overboard. We did like individual portraits of each guest. So on their menu, it had like kind of a 1950s sketch of, of their face. And then we took those sketches and put it almost like picture frames across the whole wedding reception. So you felt like you were in someone's home. No, no, no. And Phil didn't know any, I didn't tell him anything. <laughs> he didn't, he, he had no idea. He was like, what, who's, whose wedding is this? Okay. Do you know what I take so seriously? My holiday table setups. <laughs> And Valentine's Day is coming up, okay? I want all the things. I want Zaza and Towns to come downstairs. I want balloons. I want candles. I want candy. I want conversation hearts. I want love notes. I want Michael to have a whole setup for me. I'd love presents. <laughs> and I also want high quality candy and chocolate, okay? So, enter C's. C's is iconic, first of all, <laughs> it's so nostalgic. It's just classic, especially with their heart boxes. Like for Valentine's Day, I went and I bought a bunch for the table. I'm going to decorate it. So cute for Zaza and Towns and Michael too. You can go get these boxes and you can stop by your local C's shop for all your Valentine's gifts and just get it all in one. Okay. So they're even on DoorDash, which is actually amazing. So there's no excuse not to send a Valentine's Day gift that your loved ones will actually want on Valentine's Day. You should know that C's have no added preservatives ever. All of their candy are American made in Los Angeles and San Francisco. And many, this is so cute, are still handmade and hand decorated. Every time I go in there, I used to go in there with my mom and get those lollipops you know, like the caramel ones. And you just always feel like a warm grandma, nostalgic, iconic, classic feel. I'm very into it. Anyway, if you want to set up your table and you want to be cute with C's candy, you're going to visit C's.com. That's S-E-E-S.com. Or you can head to your local C's candy shop or even order on DoorDash, you guys, to treat the special people in your life to the most delicious classic Valentine's Day treats and gifts. C's.com. It's so easy to go down a social media rabbit hole when you're not feeling good and like look for all of these symptoms on social media. So instead of going down the rabbit hole, there are better ways to get the answers that you want. And that is with ZocDoc. I first found out about ZocDoc when I moved from L.A. to Austin. I was looking for a really reliable, incredible doctor. I wanted something that had actual real reviews and I wanted quality and so I was introduced to the ZocDoc app. I fell in love with it. They help you find quality doctors who focus on you, listen to you, and prioritize your care. This is amazing, and this is so much better than falling down that rabbit hole and just, like, not trusting a bunch of people on the internet. I think having this at your fingertips and having thousands of medical professionals on ZocDoc is so incredible because they really give you the expert care you need. So instead of spiraling about any symptoms that you have, you have to check out ZocDoc. They also just make everything so easy. Like you can book your appointments with a few taps on their app and you can start feeling better fast. It's a free app. Millions of users are on it. And also the reviews are legit. 
so you know exactly what you're getting and you're not like scouring the internet for questionable reviews. All right, you're going to go to ZocDoc.com slash skinny and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash skinny. ZocDoc.com slash skinny. By far the best clinically backed multivitamin for women 18 plus is Ritual. You guys, I've been taking it for three years. I took it through both my pregnancies. I took it after. It has nine key nutrients in two capsules per day. But the best part is, this is like so random, but in every bottle they have like a minty essence So it doesn't hurt your stomach and it doesn't give you those weird burps. So when you take one, it gives you like a little whisper of mint, which I'm very much about. I was having a big problem taking multivitamins that smelled like butthole. (laughs) And these ones smell minty fresh. So if you're looking for a multivitamin with traceable ingredients, you have to check them out. I like to take mine in the morning. Their brand is soy-free, gluten-free, vegan-friendly, and it has no GMOs. I also am a big fan of their protein powder. It's incredible in oatmeal. I'm just saying when you're on the site. Anyway, if you want to fill in key nutrient gaps and support foundational health, Ritual has the best multivitamin on the market. I also like how they sort of work with you with every stage of your life. So they have like a postpartum one, which is awesome. Everything you can find on their site where it comes from clean bioavailable forms. So instead of striving for perfect health, aim for supporting foundational health. And great news, Ritual is offering all our listeners 10% off during your first three months. You're going to visit ritual.com slash skinny to start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 plus to your subscription today. How did you decide to have Melissa Wood be the person who married you? I mean, what a beautiful person to marry yeah. you. Yeah. I can't think of anyone more beautiful no. inside and out. No. How I did know. you decide? So Melissa and I have been so close for so many years. And Mindy had said to us, you should have someone marry, since you're not religious, you should have someone marry you that's really close, but it's also strong enough to carry kind of the first 10 minutes of this thing. I mean, this is like, you really have to bring people together. And I thought, well, I don't really want to hire someone like, you know, like, who am I going to use? We're not religious. You didn't want to have Chris Jenner. No, you know, <laughs> honestly, not. No, like Chris would have killed it. Chris would have. Melissa crushed it. Yeah. Chris Jenner could have been the ring barrier. Totally. Yeah. No, she was like front row and center. But <laughs> but I knew and I knew it was also a big ask, like asking someone to do that at a wedding. It's a lot of stress. And so she was our number. She, it was really Melissa or, or hire someone like I there really was no backup option. So we called her, we FaceTimed her and I asked, I don't know why I thought she would just say not yes, but I thought she'd be like, oh, sure. Like just to get it out. Of, and she was like, let me think about it. And I was like, so we hung up the FaceTime and I'm like, shit, y'all. like that wasn't an automatic yes. Like, oh, this is a big ask. I just had to marry it, someone the other day. It's oh, oh don't we can't go yeah. down this road. No, you I, must have killed it. Uh, no. You think so too? Uh, no, I, yeah. Listen, listen. I'm gonna. Do you want to see the video? No, yes, twenty I minutes. Honestly, yeah. I want to be humble here. I, I really fucking okay. killed it. You did. <laughs> I killed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she did. I kill it. Anyways, but it's a big ask, and I was. It's more nervous than I've been about any other yes. thing because it's like I don't want to. You don't want to yes. fuck up the person's be- mm-hmm. beautiful day. Mm-hmm. You know. So it's a big ask. It's a huge ask. So Melissa, because she's just a goddess. She took it very seriously. So she scheduled multiple appointments with us where she would she wanted to understand our love story from she knew, but she wanted to know details, dates, times, moments that were really special. She interviewed us. Then she spent time with like um, like a media coach where she like she took her she took the story and she wanted to tighten it. Like, that's the thing with Melissa. Like, she's so all she's just a pro. It's like people think successful people just like show up. It's like, no, no, no. They prepare. And like, she just, they have every- emergency kits. They have duties. They're duties. So she, I, I mean, I knew going in, it was going to be incredible. When I tell you it, it ended up being Melissa's wedding, there was like a lineup of people after the ceremony of people being like, nice to meet you. I want What you said was beautiful. You were the highlight of this. Like she crushed it. There was not a dry eye. I was weeping. I was uncontrollably crying <laughs> the entire time she was speaking. She also started off with a flow, like where she asked everyone to close their eyes and take in a deep breath, which is if you follow Melissa Wood, it's kind of part of her practice. But it was like this beautiful moment that brought the 200 people sitting outside together. Like imagine like everyone closing your eyes. We also had a wedding that was at night. It was like thousands of candles. 
in a spotlight on Melissa. And she also wore a dress. I told every woman who came, actually, I told everyone, but I'm like, this is not the time to go subtle. Like, this is grandma's diamonds. This is huge. This is the long dress. This is a train. This is white if it's appropriate. I want white. Like I told all of the ladies to show up for the wedding. I wanted it. I wanted it to be a fun gay wedding. Where I no mean, roles. it sounds amazing. It was so fun. It sounds perfect. Yeah. How has married life been? It's the exact same. Isn't that weird? It's the exact same. Yeah. 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 It's the exact same. You just same. feel more in it together, right? You feel more in it. And I, I have to say I fall more in love with us like every day. Aww. Like I I love that I have this partner that I'm building this life with. Like we have shared values. We have kind of a shared future of what we want our future to look like. So I feel so lucky. Like it's what I feel most blessed. It seems like you can relate with Michael and I because we are in business together. And when you're also in business with your significant other, it's a whole different layer. Yeah. Well, it feels like you're building something. It feels like you're building a life t- mm-hmm. together, right? It feels like when you're just doing stuff on your own, you kind of just feel like you're getting by. Yeah. Oh, I'm doing this, paying the bills. That's fun. It's, you're building a career. but It like, feels, it feels like, like you're life. pushing the same tumbleweed up the same yes. hill and the tumbleweeds yeah. just gaining momentum together as opposed to like two tumbleweeds. Yes. Yeah. And you also kind of get the stresses and the insecurities. Yeah. Because it's also when you have businesses, people don't know what's going on behind closed doors. And so when people congratulate me, even you guys have been so kind, like I'm like, oh, if you only knew. It's a (laughs) lot of work. It's a lot of work. And also like the behind the scenes of of the drama of all of it. Right. Like it's it's sometimes I don't feel like the congratulations are, you know, congrats. on. I'm like, oh, my God, don't congratulate me on that. It's a nightmare. But you seem like you're a very type A with how you approach your businesses. You really care. You're all about building brand. It's not just like a money grab yeah. where you're just slapping mm-hmm. a white label on something. It's, yeah. You can tell that there's been a lot of time yeah. and thought and purpose into yeah. it. I would say, too, like when I think of young people, um, I was sitting with two girlfriends and they had their younger sisters there and they were talking about their kind of career after college and they were they were so focused on the salary, the salary. This is what my and like I never followed the money. Like I think the number one hack is don't follow the money, follow the passion. Publicists like don't make a ton of money. Like I I didn't go into PR thinking that I was ever gonna be like rich. Like that was certainly not the vibe. The vibe was like follow what you're obsessed with what keeps you up at night, what like drives that crazy feeling in your stomach, not the money. Because don't you feel, I mean, you've had obviously success, but don't you feel the money's not a big enough reason to keep you there when shit gets hard? Right? Oh, it's like, if, yeah. if it's just about the money and stuff gets hard, which inevitably will, like yeah. everything we do is hard, honestly. Hard. And if it was just about the money, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go do something else. Yeah. Right. Because there's other ways to make money. Yeah. Oh my God. There's so many easier ways to make money yeah. than starting businesses and opening, you know, just... Like the money, I, I, I couldn't agree more. The money is. It's like, it's a tool and it's a resource, obviously. But I feel like if that's your only driving force to do something, you're going to give up as soon as stuff gets hard. And if like, and if, again, if you're competing with someone who loves what they do and would do right. it for free, you don't stand a chance, right? Like I, I, I would joke around. I said, I actually did a post about this. Day. I said, I would be sitting here talking to you for free right. every day. Like I like right. talking to interesting right. people. Like I like, I won't shut the fuck up. Right. Yeah. So yeah. If if I have that mentality and then somebody else comes in the same space, like, hey, I need to get paid all this money to do this. And I'm like, I'll just do it for free. Like it's you have staying power and you have a reason beyond just like this, you know, finite resource that is kind of fleeting in a lot of ways. 100 percent. Obviously, like at the baseline, you need money to live and blah, sure. blah, blah. But, you know, for the first five years that I was working in New York, I had, you know, there was no money. There was just like, you know, the drive to be there. But I never thought about it. But I think I it's a mistake it. people, yeah. young people make in their careers, not just young, anybody makes in their careers. And like the first and only question is, where's the money? Where's it's like, the well, money? Yeah. You no, know, yeah. Simon said a nugget that I think is so important. You have to build great product and great brand. Yeah. And like, I always tell people, it's interesting that you say that about money. If you're going in with the intention of just making money, people can smell it. Yeah. It's off putting. And if you go in with the intention of building a great brand that people love, that's beautiful, that actually works. Right. It, it, people can feel it. They can feel it. They can feel it. They can feel it. They can feel when it's white labeled and slapped on and yeah. there's no thought behind yeah. it and it's just a money grab and there's no longevity in that. Yeah. Which brings me to Lemmy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hello, Lemmy. <laughs> Hello, Lemmy. Okay, so first of all, how does this idea even start? Is this a conversation where you guys are out for drinks and you think this will be fun? Or was this something that was more strategic where you guys, are, she comes to you and says, let's do this? So this is something Courtney has been, when I first met Courtney, she was the girl carrying around a Ziploc bag with 30 supplements in it. And she was, this is 20 years ago when there wasn't, you know, five aisles of supplements at Target. This is before the supplement like revolution. And she was obsessed with health and wellness. So on every group chat, she was the one telling you, try this, try CMOS, try it. Like she's the person that's always, I mean, I can't. We're taking a focus. Oh, it's, it's here. the best. It's actually really fucking good. Aren't Taylor, they delicious? Taylor's focused on his penis. Uh-huh. On your penis. Mm. Okay. <laughs> the taste? Ahead. Yeah, it's so good. Mm. So this has been a brand that she's wanted to start for 20 years. And Courtney, and if you watch the show, you know, she doesn't do anything that's not authentic. So for her, the timing had to be right. And the timing over the last three years has been has been great for her. She's obviously in this incredible relationship. So the timing was all like it really was kind of just this perfect Venn diagram of her wanting to launch this, having many opportunities to launch it, wanting to work with someone who she trusted. You know, Courtney and I have been friends for 20 years. We're so close. I kind of know all the things that she really cares about. And this is her baby. I mean, every logo, every every texture, every ingredient. The challenge with gummy vitamins is there are hundreds of gummy vitamins out there that have bad for you ingredients in them. They have glucose. They have gelatin. They're not clean. So we needed to make a super clean gummy that was non-GMO, artificial, free of artificial flavor, sweeteners, all of it. In question, why did delicious. it have to be gummy? Because you wanted it to... We're definitely going to be launching capsules. So like they're, they're coming this, the gummies are the fastest growing format. And for a lot of people out there who are beginning their wellness journey, gummies, the beginning, it's where they start. Sure. They start, they start in gummies. It is essentially like getting a, a kid hooked that you start with like a Flintstone vitamin yeah, or something yeah. just to get the idea of taking a vitamin. So it makes sense. And a lot of gummy vitamins don't use clinically studied ingredients. So in all of, all of the lemmies, there's clinical benefits. So in our D blow, like we have a probiotic and a prebiotic, that that thing works. Within an hour, you're feeling incredible. And and there's a significant reduction in bloating. I mean, all of them have, Courtney's favorite is the focus you just had, that we just had. I have to say, you sent me some of the sleep ones. I love it. I love it. I take it every single night. But I just tried the focus and it tastes, the taste is really good. You know how gummies can be like, I can yeah. eat the whole bottle. No, yeah, no, no. it is good. It's really no, no, no. good. I'll be, I go wild. I'll be the most focused. How many can you eat? <laughs> okay, so it's a dosage of two, but Phil and I go wild. Like we, I know. You're I microdosing. Say that. Yeah, I'm microdosing. <laughs> I can have, I can have one more and not be. Yeah, like, you can treat yourself. The focus is two. Um, D bloat is two. And then the matcha, the matcha is like, it's, are, oh, you had them at, at Courtney's, yeah. right? Yeah. They're, these are just crazy town. I'm Maybe trying cool. the matcha. I'm just, I'm so proud of Courtney because this has been a business that she has just poured her, her heart and soul into. And the timing is perfect. So how are you involved on a day-to-day -day basis in this? Like, what it, what do you do? If someone's out there, they're listening and they want to do what Simon does. What is it that you would say you do in this business? So operationally, I'm a partner in this business. So everything from like our brand shoots to um, kind of mapping out what Courtney's like kind of ca content calendar is going to look like and then collaborating with her on all creative. So she is our creative director. She's our our chief of, of product. I mean, she all of these products all come from Courtney's idea. So focus is the one that she wanted to launch first. Matcha is something that she's so passionate about for many years. And then D-Bloat, D-Bloat is something that actually came really from push feedback, like years and years of, of customers and people in her community saying, I'm bloated all the time and I hate taking bloat capsules. Like I can't take capsules, like period. They just make, they, they do not sit well with my stomach. So for me, and I'm always bloated, I'm a puffer fish. I'm literally a puffer fish. So this is a savior for me. Okay, here's the move. Tell All me. right, I'm eating a I'm eating a focus. Some mouthfuls of lemmies. It's so good. The focus is like real. No, no, no. Oh my God. It's insane. Okay. So this is the move. 
take your deep bloat and then you need to put your sheet mask on, but then ice roll over your cold sheet mask that's been kept in the fridge while you're taking your lemmy deep bloat. You need an ice roller to deep bloat if you're I a pufferfish. I don't really see you're a pufferfish though. Are you really a pufferfish? No, I'm I'm bloated all the I'm time. I'm a real pufferfish. I'm are you bloated all the time? No, my face is bloated. Oh, no, I'm just bloated. I feel like I can't eat anything. And then you, you gotta have, have that issue. You gotta have a great ice roller, a great facial massage, a lymphatic drainage on the stomach, and a lemmy deep bloat. Congrats on this, by the way. It's just absolutely everywhere. I mean, I don't understand how, like, how we need to do, like, a, a de-bloat collab, I feel like. I saw this, by the way, in Alex Earl's Instagram story. I know everyone's message. I'm getting messages from, like, she second grade. She needs to come on the, on the pod. Alex Earl. Now, are you listening? Alex Earl. She's the new diamond of TikTok. I can tell. Everyone is talking about oh, That's the one you showed me yesterday when it was, like, in the... Yeah. I literally have people from second grade DMing me being like, oh, my God. And everyone loves her. No, she's having adorable, sh- adorable, yeah, adorable, so relatable. And she's having this incredible moment. What, of course, scares me is when anyone has these moments. I'm like, girl, be prepared because you know what the community does. <laughs> you know what they're <laughs> yeah, gonna, I've seen this before. Uh, you know what they're going to do. Just be careful. You know, what is the pattern of what people do in human nature? Well, unfortunately, we like to we like to build up and then we find the tweet from 1998, you know, that and you've seen it all. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen I've seen it all. And it can be it's really, really overwhelming. This is like a perfect segue to ask you if someone is blowing up like that and they're getting astronaut syndrome and they're on the moon. Yeah. What is your advice putting your publicist hat on? Like, do you need to go back and delete your Facebook? Like, what is the And Also, not just your publicist, but like being close to many people that that's happened to. Yeah. What do you do? So I think you have to be prepared to weather some storms. OK, and what's get... the Judy playbook for social media? You need to really think long and hard about every single piece of content that you're posting. And if you, and it's annoying, but you should be sending your content to another person. If you're posting something and there's, if there's something that you're like, "Mm, I'm not sure, send it, send it to three people and see if, see what the filter is on it. See what the reaction is. Because now in this, in this world we're living in, it can really it can affect your brand and and you can lose huge opportunity over an innocent mistake. Yeah. And not even not just I mean, maybe years from now. Yeah. You know. Simon, you're amazing. Can we do a Lemmy Sniff Judy giveaway? Yeah. Done. OK. Yeah, obviously. Do we have a code for anything, too? I didn't ask you this off. I don't have a code. Do we need a code? Can we do a code? Yeah. Well, I mean, code co- skinny, code skinny done for all three. Yeah. No way. Why can't we? Okay, this is the move, you guys. Go. If you are giving us a code, what what's the percentage off? What's What do you think is a fair percentage? 20%, 15%. It's up to you. 20. Absolutely. Wow, generous. Okay, so I would go use code SKINNY. Kind of put him on the spot there. You can't go. Yeah. I know. I did put him on the spot. You could. Oh, my God. No. Are you kidding? That, I mean, I'd be, I'm honored. Okay, we can edit it out if you don't want to. No, 100%. Okay. Let's do a code SKINNY for the focus or for all of them. All of them. Okay, for all of them. I would get the focus to start just because yes. I'm obsessed with it. But I do like the sleep one a lot, too. It's good. Did you see the campaign with Chloe and like as Chloe is um, Sleeping Beauty? Yes, so I did cute. see that yeah. with blonde hair. Yeah. Adorable. Yeah. It was that you. Yeah, ah. it was Courtney. But yes, yes. Ah, yeah, it's so good. OK, and then let's also do a code for sniff candles. I yes. personally have the half baked harvest candle. It's yes. huge. It's amazing. And it smells so good. It's not overpowering. Totally recommend that. Don't forget to cut your wicks and blow it out every five hours. Yes. I'm great at blowing, so I'll just make sure to practice that. And then let's also do a code for Judy. Everyone needs Judy Everyone on needs the planet. Judy. Yeah. New year, new you. Yeah. I just think if you have an opportunity to be prepared that's seamless and easy like this, it's a no-brainer. Why wouldn't you? Uh, can I ask one question just for my own curiosity? Is, is there only one kit of Judy or is there like different tiers? There is. Right now, we had two kits. We now streamline into one backpack. Okay, and then explain specifically. Judy is basically um, everything you're going to need yep. in a natural disaster when something goes wrong, exactly. power goes it out. It has over 60 different items that are hyper organized into a preparedness kit for you. You know what yeah. I love about you? Just got to say, you reinvent categories really well. Thank you. Really well. Thank you you. you take something that's maybe a little crusty. <laughs> chalky vitamin. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a 
um, a ugly emergency kit, maybe like a candle that's a little meh. Yeah. And meh. you just like reinvent it. Thank you. I mean, it's a very, it's a craft. I it's love an you. art. Thank you. Um, use code skinny on what are the, what are the websites and the Instagrams? Um, uh, lemmylive.com. Okay. And at Lemmy. And sniff is sniff.ca. Okay. Or no, sniff.co. Oh okay. My God, don't kill me, Phil. And then uh, Judy is judy.co. We're going to link it all out. Too. Okay, good. Can okay. we do like a big giveaway with everything? Yeah, of course. Okay, you guys, all you have to do is go follow all three brands on Instagram and tell me your favorite takeaway from this episode with Simon on my latest post at Lauren Bostick. Simon, I have been wanting you to come on the podcast for so long and you honestly are so easy to podcast. You can I come back. You anytime I love you, we could you. take it a lot of different directions we could talk about michael's hair a natural on the mic Simon. before no. you go thank you did you really get two hair transplants you have two. to tell the audience i got two yeah i did the i did the extraction where they pull it from the back and they plant it in the front <laughs> does it hurt, hurt? That no. Looks... Oh. no 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 it painful no it doesn't hurt no it's annoying i mean life is so hard oh my yeah. god <laughs> i just have got air sculpt we'll yeah. talk i mean yeah. it's it's it, it, i would it, die for your hair just so you know oh like you have the thickest how old are you I'm 36. Wait, hold on. I'm oh 87, 36. Wow. I'll be 36. It's so thick. I know. I hear about it every day. It's really nice. Thank he you. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. Yeah. It's got a great hairline. You should get a hair like endorsement. We, you know what, uh, Simon? Here we go. Yeah. I think I just found the guy. Yeah. Yeah. When you guys you. do a hair, you know what? I'm not yeah. joking. I've been talking about th these people at Redken. Okay. They're marketing directors of Sleep at the Switch. I'm telling you, the, I've been using this rough pace for them for okay. years. I'm just giving them a free plug, but it's yeah. true. And I'm like, what is this marketing director doing? Someone got Do you fired. tell them? No, I, I mean, I haven't told them, but I just feel yeah. like they're How have they not sought me out? I mean, no, no, no. With the main, like, I thought maybe you had transplant surgery, to be no, honest. Never. No. I thought you had the cut because it's such a no. hairline. No. Uh -uh. Yeah. And by the way, if he did, I would like out it and tell the doctor. No, I know you would. <laughs> I know you are. Those are. people at L'Oreal or Reagan, they need to have a whole board Wait, meeting Wait, can I just this. ask what the second transplant, do they do the same thing? Yes. Now, I can't do another one because there's no more hair to pull. But yes, they did another one. Did you like it? Um, I did. I mean, I just wish there were more. I would transplant as much as I could. Can you use pubic hair or eyebrows? No, you have to use your actual hair because it's like the texture needs to be the exact same. But why there, can't you just use some of Michael's? What about like supplementation? It Is there a certain supplementation you can do? Yeah, you can, but it's not what I need. It's, it's like not you, as effective. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to know one of the best things for growing hair and for not going bald? Inversion therapy. Oh, really? What is I'm that? I'm really talking about this a lot. Okay. Who did that again? It's, it's, for, it, it's, Basically, like Louise, laying at hey, a thirty degree angle. Okay. You lay. Okay. So when, whenever you're meditating or like laying and, and relaxing, you put your feet up, but then try to put your head back so it stretches the tech neck, while also giving circulation to the hair. So what's happening is we're standing up like this, and all the circulation's draining. So there's no circulation in the head. But if you do thirty minutes of inversion therapy every day, you're getting the blood flow going. Okay, you just I need lay to do inside this. your house like a bat. You just you lay know? like yeah. That'd Everyone needs to be stretching their neck too. I'm yeah. noticing, like, my, with me too, like tech neck. My um, my friend told me to kiss the sky. <laughs> Can we get a lemmy for tech neck? Oh my god, hundred. We were gonna do um, like an uh, a blue light gummy, and then we decided not to. But what do you guys think? I mean, I think I What's love a blue light, like blue... to reduce like uh, inflammation oh, the... of the eyes from hey, like staring at. That's a real thing. Yeah, I think I think that we are going to have the pandemic of the eyes moving forward. We we, we were not Everyone's meant to evolve like phones. this yeah. with these phones and these computers. I can't stand it. Oh, no. Yeah. You know because what I you do know? Why we're staring close all the time. Our eyes weren't meant to stare. We, we go... had this guy on Robert Slovak. He's amazing. And he's very, very, very smart. One of the smartest people I've ever met. And he told us about EMF and all that. But he told me he's like, you do not put your phone on airplane mode at night. You do not put it away from your bed. You turn it off. Off. He said, turn it off, turn off your computer, turn off your iPad. It is so bad. You're sleeping all night next to all of that. And for me, like my phone, and I know you're the same way. It's like business. It's not a personal device for me. It's no. like, it's you guys should it's do business. You should do an eye supplement with, I think it was like yeah. lutein. You lutein. Should, it was going to be a lutein. You should call it Let Me See. Yeah. Well, we just launched Let Me See Moss today, which is called Let Me See, but spelled C. Okay. Then you can't launch Let Me See. That's yeah. too close. But yeah. Let Me See Moss. Wait, should... hold on. You have to tell us about yeah. that. Yeah. It's a tincture. Because you know, the, are you a CMOS person? My Lauren Bostic pink drink had CMOS in it. Oh, oh my God. Of course it did. So this is a tincture. <laughs> no, obviously it did. No, this is a, this is, um, a tincture. Okay. And we added biotin in, in um, we added biotin in D3. 
and it's amazing. That's and it's genius. It tastes like honey, and it's a little tincture. Yeah. No, what color the gel is, it? is It's clear. Cute. No, you're getting. You're literally getting the bottle when you get home. Oh my it's already god. You should do the eye supplement though. I think it's good. You do. Yeah. We oh, weren't sure if it was a big enough. Well, let's talk about it more. I feel like it should be a big thing because yeah. I, I feel like everyone wants to have good vision, right? Yeah. And we're just destroying our eyes. And there's not a lot of people that are really talking about it. So well. everyone yeah. Andrew is Huberman's destroying doing a good job yeah. of talking about it their a lot. neck and their eyes. It's like this is our number one. This is the one we can't. It sold out again last week. I mean, the deep this bloat. is the deep blow. I get it. We're all bloated. Not Michael. Michael's not bloated. You're not bloated. Don't even get me started. You don't have any bloating no, issues. No bloat. Listen. No bloat. I get a lot of compliments on this. No, 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 no. Yeah, we, the LGBT community is here for you. <laughs> we Hell appreciate yeah. your body. We appreciate your hair and your teeth. Moral always <laughs> says that. Listen, she's honestly a pain in the ass, so you never know. Honestly, yeah. no, I could use you. a break. All right, Simon, where can everyone find you? Pimp yourself out. Where can they follow you and your husband and see your uh, amazing living room wedding? Um, they can follow us on Instagram si at Simon Huck and Phil is Pip the Rep. Phil, you can come on and tell the real story about the wedding if you want. Oh my God. Oh, Thank you please. for coming on. Come back. Thank you so much. Thank you so much fun, guys.